Now I said in the net previously I said in this video we'll be getting to actually writing the code and making our first box to the example, but this is the thing, you know, Box 2D, it's, 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 this sounds so amazing and it's just going to solve all of our problems, but it, and it, it, it might, it might solve some of our problems. Uh, I have many problems which it has not yet solved, but uh, it, uh, uh, it's, it's complicated. So here's the thing, I forgot something. And so before we can get to this writing the actual code into our example and making Box 2D, having Box 2D calculate the physics to us, for us, we need to talk about one more thing. What is that one more thing? We need to talk about Box2D's coordinate system. So, you know, we have this processing window. And it has 0, 0 in the top left. And it has a width, you know, 640. It has a height, maybe it's 360. It has all that stuff. It's all pixel coordinates. It's pixel coordinates on the screen. Here's one of the wonderful things about Box2D. Box2D is a physics engine in the purest sense of the world. It knows nothing, it cares nothing about our processing window. It's actually doing all of its calculations in meters, in seconds. It thinks about the real physical world. We are creating, we, are, we have to give Box2D numbers that correspond to things in the real physical world. Well, here's this you know, object, it's three centimeters long, and it's, it's a meter away from this other object. We have to really work in those terms, which is a little bit strange, because everything we've been doing all along is like, you know, uh, in the middle of the screen is 360, 180, and hey, let's draw this and pixel coordinate that. So we've got to take a whole new way of thinking. And, and in fact, this little diagram we have, which is sort of describes the magic of how simple box 2 d is, which is, you know, make a bunch of objects, set them up in the magic box, box 2 dds world, and then every time through draw, just ask, where are they? I'm going to draw them. Where are they? Where are they? I'm going to draw them. So, but we need to add two steps here. Convert from pixels to world. So whenever we say world, that's going to refer to the box 2 d world, which, you know, corresponds to something to like our actual world, but in two dimensions. And then, so we create our objects, we think in pixels, we convert them to world coordinates, send them into box 2 d When it's time for us to draw them, box 2 d is going to give them to us in world coordinates. So we have to convert from world to pixels. So what does it mean to do this? So one of the th things that the pbox2d, this helper class that I've created, does for us is it has a bunch of, bunch of functions for these conversions. They're not that complicated. It's just a matter of translating and scaling. Bo this, is, this is our processing world. Box2d's world is just the Cartesian coordinate system you might have done in a high school geometry class. You've got 0, 0 at the center. And you've got the y-axis pointing up and the x-axis pointing to the right. This is the same as our processing world, except you know, in our processing world, 0, 0 is in the top left, x points to the right, and the y-axis positive points down. So it's the same but flipped and much smaller. So Box2D is not tuned for large distances. It's kind of works well for like, you know, the Angry Birds thing. We have this little tiny bird flying across and bouncing into a bunch of boxes. So generally we're using small numbers. So something that might be 100 pixels wide should, maybe, should not be 100 meters wide. That would be somewhat insane. So, um, but all of that is going to happen for you behind the scenes. There's absolute ways of digging into that and, and tuning it in a custom way, but we're not going to, we're, we're going to sort of stay in a comfortable, soothing and relaxing place. We're going to let the, the PBox2D helper class kind of manage that conversion from, for us. Now, there's another aspect to this. Oh my goodness, so many things. This is definitely going to be an entire video, just kind of about this little topic here, which we need to prepare ourselves. We're, again, what is the syntax? How are we using that? That's going to happen in the next, this, this moment that I keep saying is going to happen eventually. But before we can even look at implementing this, there's another piece of this puzzle, right? We spent all this time learning about something called p-vector. Uh, I guess I'm just going to erase all this. We spent all this time learning about something called p-vector. We, Box2D, we now need to learn about something called VEC2. So this is just a kind of hard truth of the world that we live in. This idea of a vector is a general concept in, in physics, simulation, motion, programming, computer graphics, all that stuff. 
And when we are in processing, so we're using p vector. If you use, you know, if you ever programmed with something called open frameworks, you might be using OFX, OFX vector. When you're in Box2D, you're using something called Vec2. When we use toxic libs a little later, we're going to see vector 2D, vector or vec 2D, vec 3D. So there are lots and lots of implementations of vector classes everywhere that you can look. The good news is the concepts are all the same. Everything we learned about adding vectors, scaling vectors, normalizing, magnitude, all that stuff, it exists in P vector, it exists in the Box2D Vec2 class. The thing that's a little bit unfortunate is this syntax is always going to be a little nuanced and a little different. And you know, I don't know, maybe we like that syntax, maybe we like the, that syntax. I'm not really sure which one's better. But we just have to, we don't have to look, memorize them both, but we have to feel a little bit comfortable with them both. So just to show, just to kind of cover this in a little bits here, you know, whereas when we said in processing in p-vector, p-vector v equals a new p-vector, right, with some coordinates in, in, in them, we're, whatever we make vectors when we're using Box2D, we're going to make vec2 objects. So it looks the same exact way, you know, an x and a y. Um, but instead of being a p vector object, it's a vec2 object. And there's a lot of other things. Like we did location.add velocity, added velocity to location. If we go look at how the syntax works in vec2, you'll see that it's location.add local. Sorry, I didn't write that very well. Add local uh, velocity, right? So. Um, the, you know, in, in toxic libs, we're going to see that it's add self. What's going on here? Velocity is being added to location. Velocity is being added to location. So it's just called add local to emphasize that location is changing here. Um, multiply is the same thing. Instead, in processing, it's mult. In vec2, it's just mul. Uh, you know, normalize is the same. Normalize is the same in both places. Magnitude, however, in processing, we could get the magnitude of a vector v dot mag. In, in vec2, I believe it's v dot length. So we just need to feel a little comfortable with all these differences. And I want to, I really, really desperately want to point you to a place right now where you could just see a list of these. Um, if you look in the Nature of Code book, there's a little section, um, that's the link that I'll include, that has kind of the functions and, and their corresponding names. You can also look in the JBox2D documentation. So if you download JBox2D from the JBox2D website, it'll have the Java docs, which will have all of the functions for VEC2. So this is just something we need to be comfortable with. So, okay, so we know. <laughs> There are, there are two things. We're, we're getting closer now. We know that we're going to make VEC2 objects. We're going to have a VEC2 object maybe called position. We're going to want to tell Box2D about it. And then later, we're going to want to ask for the new position back. So remember, we need to do a conversion. Conversion. So. How do we do those conversions? The, the pbox2d helper class has a set of functions that will take a world coordinate and convert it to pixels, or a pixels coordinate and convert it to world. <laughs> These functions are somewhat really, I, I just have to admit, they're really awkwardly named, and I'm this open competition. Do anybody has a better naming convention for these functions that want to suggest one? I'm totally thrilled to, to rewrite this library to be a little simpler. But just to kind of go through what those are, um, for example, when we are converting, when we have a, when we set up, we, we're thinking, okay, I want my x, y to be in, I'm, I want my object to be right there on the screen. That's its pixels coordinate. But I need to tell Box2D about its world coordinates. The function's going to be called coord <laughs> pixels to world. And then we pass in the x, y. So this is going to be how we're going to convert from a pixel location, and out is going to come the world location that we're going to pass into Box2D. When it comes out, we're going to get that world location, because Box2D is only thinking in world. World, world knows nothing about pixels. Then it's going to, then, then we, we're going to get that world location, and we need to convert that to pixels. So to convert that to pixels, we're going to say coordinate, coord, world to pixels, and we're going to pass in an x and y. These functions, these conversion functions, can take x two arguments, the x and the y separately as floats, 
or they can take a VEC2 object. So it can take a VEC2 object and give you the converted one back. So we're going to see there's lots of functions like this. We're also going to need to do this for sizes. If we set up a box, if we set up a box with a given width and a given height, we're going to have to convert that pixel width. Like we know we want our box to be 100 pixels wide and 50, 50 pixels high. But what is it in Box2D world units? We're going to have to say scalar pixels to world w. So you can start to see the convention here. We might convert a coordinate, we might convert a scalar, we might convert a vector. There's a list of functions and we're going to see them in the examples. And as we look through the examples, I'll point them out. Again, this is a big topic, lots of code, lots of things for you to work out. There's the book, there's what I'm talking about, there's the examples. Let me know what's missing, but uh, hopefully we're going to figure this out together. Okay, so you can see all these functions, but ah, there's one little detail that's kind of important. When we draw a rectangle in processing, we think of the rectangle as having a width and a height. The full height, the full width. Box2D thinks about the width and height of a rectangle as the distance from the center to the edge. Right? So that's the width and that's the height. So when we convert in the code examples, you're going to be seeing that we think of our pixel width. Then when we convert that, we need to divide it by 2. So these are just the little details we're going to see as we start to build this processing example that's actually going to have elements um, that we're going to create and put in the Box2D world and get those locations back out. OK, so this is a lot of jumbled stuff here. What, what I hopefully want you to take away from this is, we need to understand about converting between pixel coordinates and box 2 world coordinates. We're going to be going back and forth a lot. We'll see this in the examples. And we need to realize that all of this math that we're going to be doing with box 2 vectors is going to use the vec2 class, which is very similar to p-vector, but with different syntax. So um, you know, if you're confused about this, I don't know, rewatch this. Maybe that'll help. Take a look at the section that I'm linking to in the Nature of Code book. Um, but uh, we, this is now we've kind of gathered all the pieces, and we're going to actually look at the code implementation and make our first Box2D sketch in the next video. Okay.